Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Lone Rider is a company that has become very well known for their adventure motorcycle luggage and other accessories. The folks at Lone Rider were generous enough to send me everything you see here for testing on my personal BMW R1250 GS Adventure model year 2021. So what they sent out were the moto bags, the 31 and the 38 liter, the mini bags, the micro bags, the crash bar bags, their handlebar bag, and of course their signature headlight guard. So here's what you can expect in this video. I'm gonna break down the installation, how they mount to the bike. Uh, we'll talk about the fit and finish and the construction, the features of the bags, how they operate in reality, how getting things in and out of them uh, is gonna be, uh, different ways you can use all the bags and how modular they are. We're also gonna take a look, of course, at the headlight guard, show you how that works and the features and benefits of that. And I think by the end of this video, you'll have a good idea uh, whether Lone Rider products are something that you want to look into for your particular bike. So why don't we just start at the front of the bike and work our way backwards. I think that'll be the easiest. So let's take a look at their headlight guard. Now this is probably the coolest headlight guard for the BMW GS, the late model GS is on the market. I've tried some other ones and here's why I really do like this Lone Rider guard. It's basically two pieces. You see it like it is now with this amber lens and this grill in front. So the grill protects from stones and rocks being uh, kicked up and this amber lens provides really good daytime visibility. But if you're riding at night and you want the full force of the headlight not blocked by this grill and this amber lens, what you do is you pop this section out here from these top little uh, push pins and this is on a hinge and it rotates down like this. So now, and you can adjust the tension on these hinges here with a little nut, which is very easy to do. Now you have the headlight going through this clear polycarbonate plastic, which is also very easy to clean. Uh, this also pops off too very easily if you wanna take the whole thing off to clean it. So this two piece design is very smart, it's very innovative, and I think Lone Rider did a great job with this. So I'm very happy with this guard and it's something that I would definitely spend my own money on uh, even if I wasn't getting this as a promo. So I really do uh, appreciate this headlight guard and I think it's something that you guys should check out. Now, what about the installation on the headlight guard? So when I opened the package and I saw the instructions, I was like, whoa, this looks like a lot. There's all, it shows all these crazy pieces to it. But don't be scared because most of it actually comes pre-assembled. So it'll come in like two pieces with some mounting things. It only bolts on the bike and it takes a few minutes. There's these two screws up here. There's a couple of attachment points at the bottom. And then you basically uh, screw this outer part on, this hinge part, and that's pretty much it. So when you actually break it down, it's really simple to install. It just may look intimidating when you first open the package. So it probably took me about 20 minutes to get this thing on. All right, so let's take a look at the crash bar bags. Now, when I was in discussions with Lone Rider about testing this gear, they said, well, you can use the mini bags, which are the six liter bags, which I actually have on the back of the panniers, on the crash bars because they're easier to get in and out of. And I'll show that in a minute. You can mount those to the crash bars, but they also offer a GSA specific upper crash bar bag. And there's a couple reasons I like this. It fits the design of the crash bar in the bike very, very well and doesn't get in the way. And I can even still kind of slip my boots onto these highway pegs I have mounted here. The bag has a zipper. Well, no, let me back up. So to install the bag, there's a couple of Velcro uh, 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 loops up on the bottom and top. And then it kind of has this cover in the back that slides over the crash bar and attaches with another Velcro loop. So um, it's pretty secure when it's on here and it mounts literally in about 30 seconds. Now, when you get inside the bag, there's gonna be a small little pouch for like documents and then there's the main pouch. But what they also give you is these dry bags. So these are eight liter dry bags. So uh, I would recommend if you're riding in any sort of inclement weather to pack your belongings in here, roll this up, close this, and then stuff this inside the crash bar bag. Now your gear is waterproof. Now you have the option if you're not riding in the rain, if you want really easy access to stuff like maybe maps or snacks, you can just put that right in the bag and not in a dry bag and the choice is up to you. So I, I like these bags a lot. I haven't seen too many GS specific crash bar bags uh, and this is the one of the best ones I've seen. They also have some reflectivity here. They're made of uh, Cordura nylon and they seem to be pretty well made and the zipper seems to be of good quality. So yeah, I like them a lot. They're very useful uh, for me 
and they're a great addition to the GSA. So Lone Rider also offers a handlebar bag. Now, this does fit several models, and they have a list of models on their website. Thankfully, it also fits my Africa Twin 1100 Adventure Sport, so I can use it on both bikes. The handlebar bag attaches with three uh, Velcro straps very, very fast, and it also has some additional um, attachment points here if you even wanted to make it even more secure. So it attaches very, very fast. You notice that it has some uh, Molly uh, webbing here, so if you wanted to attach a little small Molly accessory bag here, you could do that. Now, why would you want to use a handlebar bag? Well, there's several reasons, and there's several reasons I really like these as opposed to a tank bag. The main reason being that when I have a tank bag here, and you can see I do have an attachment for an SW Motec tank bag, tank bags get in my way very, very badly when I'm trying to stand up off-road. So they're in my way. A handlebar bag is never in my way. It stays out of the way, and it gives me a place to put things like earplugs, a wallet, a cell phone, charging cables, uh, spare change, uh, you know, cliff bars, uh, the tiers of KTM riders, uh, whatever you want to put in here, it works just fine. Now, it comes in two pieces. So this part here, you can actually remove this part if you don't want and just have a simple one compartment handlebar bag. But what I like to do is run with uh, both parts of the bag here. So on this outer part, you have a, uh, a zippered pocket here for putting small items. This is really good for like maps. Then you have a clear pouch. You have another uh, Velcro pocket here. You have a place for a tire gauge, which is handy. And then you get to the main compartment. I don't know the exact capacity. It's small. It's like a liter or something like that. But you can put a surprising amount of stuff in here. And then it just folds up and it's out of the way. So I'm a fan of handlebar bags, whether you choose to go with this one or other handlebar bags that are on the market. I've also used other products from other manufacturers, um, but this one is very modular. It has a lot of compartments and it's, uh, it's very full featured. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend uh, checking out this handlebar bag and it's something that I found to be genuinely useful. All right, let's get to arguably the most important or most interesting part of the system. So let's talk about the Lone Rider Moto bags with the quick release system, as well as some of the additional bags I have attached here. So we'll look at getting them on and off, the attachment system, the quick release system, some of the features of the bags and uh, you know the capacity and things like that. So how do these bags go off and on? So the new generation of the Lone Rider bags have a quick release system. And I will say it really works well and it is pretty well thought out and it's, I won't, it's somewhat universal. So on their website, they have a list of bikes that their quick release system will work with, or a list of racks, I should say. So the racks uh, cannot have a bunch of like stuff all over the racks. They have to be like more tubular racks so that this can clip on. But all the attachments are adjustable. So let me show you how that works. So they come preset for the BMW GSA racks, which is convenient for me because that's the bike I'm showing. So there's a lock here that you undo. And then there's a latch. And then let me show you the back side of the bags. All right, so now what you can see is this backing plate can be removed from the pannier itself with these uh, screws here very quickly with these Torx head screws. What that allows you to do, and there's videos about this on their website, is adjust all of these bumpers and attachment slots and this bracket uh, to be used on different racks because different racks have different spacing. So that's very, very genius and it allows for a pretty simple system. Uh, and again, they have videos on their website showing you how to do this. Um, but once you have them set up for your bike, you simply walk up to the bike, you, you place the bag like this, You, then you uh, push down this latch, then you take the key, and the bag locks on. You have to push down, to apply some pressure here, because there's rubber bumpers in these latches. Apply some pressure, and then the bag is locked very securely uh, to the motorcycle. Now, one of the benefits of the way they've designed that is that when you remove the bag, nothing remains on the luggage rack. So for instance, if you have a set of hard panniers that you like to use for certain trips that you take with your bike, those will click right on. There's no adapters attached to the racks when you take the bag off, unlike some other luggage systems. 
Now, Lone Rider also provides uh, with the bags these combination locks and these, this metal uh, plate here. So if I go ahead and enter my combination, which of course I'm not going to give you, I'm not giving you the combination, then, uh, then you can pop these off and getting into the bags is as simple as undoing these two buckles here, uh, opening this up, opening the strap. Now you can get in to the bags. So the bags are two, they're a two bag system like most of the soft panniers are. They include an inner dry bag which has carry handles and straps if you want to pop this off and take it to your hotel room at night. You put this in here with your gear and then you, to close the bags, and they have a video on this on their website too and I had to watch it to understand, but you roll this up uh, to this point, then you strap these kind of, you roll them inside like this and then all this folds up goes behind this, this metal part latches and that's it. And then of course you've got your two buckles here which have adjustment straps and retainers for the uh, extra strap and uh, you're good to go. Now you notice with the Lone Rider gear and with a lot of the gear on the market today, including the competitive products, they have Molly attachments on the top, the sides, and even on the bottom so that you can attach other bags using a Molly system they also have attachments for uh, other straps if you want to really lash something down. So it's a large capacity modular system designed for world travelers and serious adventures. And I think they did a pretty good job uh, creating a luggage system that you can configure for your personal needs and attach more gear if you need to. The bags also have uh, a carry handle here. I'm not going to take it off again, but they have this rubberized carry handle. Um, so they really did think of, of quite a bit of stuff here. Now, in terms of what I have attached to the bag, so they sent out their mini bags, which are these six liter dry bags. I have these on the back. Uh, and the nice thing about the mini bags is that they're super easy to get into. So all you do, they're, they're a roll top dry bag. All you do is unclip this buckle and then you can get right into them. This is a great place uh, to store things like a mid layer for uh, staying warm, a heated vest, extra gloves, uh, snacks, food and water, stuff you need super easy access to where you don't want to have to get into the main pannier compartment. Uh, so I all, and they even have Molly attachments too if you want to put more stuff on them. I've got the micro bags, which are I think like a three liter bag or something like that in the front of the panniers, but you can put them wherever you want. Now in terms of capacity, uh, this system on the, you can get different, they have a 31 and a 38 liter. So on this bike, they give you a 38 on the non-exhaust side and a 31 on the exhaust side, uh, which is a lot of storage. And I will say these bags are larger capacity than most of the other bags on the market. So they're designed to fit a lot of stuff inside them. Uh, and then if you add the external bags like this, that, that adds to that number, unlike some other uh, manufacturers where they'll kind of quote the capacity with external attachments. This has 31 liters, that has 38, and then whatever you add is in addition to that. They have so much room, in fact, that I could go camping on this bike with this luggage and not even put any luggage on the top and fit everything in this luggage. That's how much room there is. All right, so a couple other things on these bags I want to talk about. Uh, the first is you see they have these rubber uh, crash bumpers on the corner. So these are designed uh, to protect from impacts and these are, you know, replaceable in case you damage them a lot. So you can, you can really throw these things around. Um, you know, a lot of you have seen the Brett Tax video where they lay their bikes down in the intro scene. So yeah, they're, they seem to be pretty tough. This is not a long-term task. This is just initial impression. So I'm just showing you the construction. I don't know how they hold up in the long run. Uh, there's other videos out there with people who have reviewed them uh, more in the, in, for long-term testing. Now, another thing I wanted to show you about these bags, let me open them up, is so they're a semi-rigid system. And what they mean is that there's an internal stiffener inside the bag. So you see how the bag is kind of it's kind of semi-rigid right now. That's because I have the stiffeners in them. Now, you can take... If you pull these stiffeners out, they're attached with some Velcro, so sorry for the noise. If you take these internal stiffeners out, now what you can do is if you wanted to leave the bag on the bike, the bag will collapse 
uh, into a more narrow bag. You don't want to have these attachments on. And then they give you compression straps to hold it flat. And I'll put like a picture video of that here. But that's if you wanted to you know, reduce the width of your bike by pushing the bags in, but still leaving them on your bike. Now for me, I would just leave the internal stiffener in them at all times. And then I would just take the panniers off the bike if I didn't need the storage, but that's just me. But it's nice that they offer that, uh, you know, that option. All right, well, thank you for hanging in me uh, there with this whole video. I think that about covers my initial impressions of the Lone Rider uh, luggage and the headlight guard for the BMW GS series. I'm really impressed with how they thought the system out. And I really definitely like these moto bags and I can see myself using them not only on this bike, but on some of the other bikes that I own and other bikes that I test. Um, there's a lot of really cool features that they have. Now, of course, like I said at the beginning, I use and test all different brands, so I don't have loyalty to certain brands. I may have certain preferences that are sort of in my head, but I try to be as neutral as I can in these videos. And if you stay tuned to my channel, you're gonna see videos on the Moscow Moto luggage, on other types of luggage that I'm also using and testing other brands that I also like to support, and I like to support everybody. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm sure I missed a lot here. I, it's hard to cover everything in these videos. So please, uh, questions, comments, concerns, input, put that down below in the comment section. I'll be sure to read through those and get back to you. And if you want more details on this luggage, I'll have a link to Lone Rider's website below. Now, just so you know, I don't earn any money if you buy Lone Rider luggage. I don't have an affiliate program with them. Uh, I'm just choosing to test this out, make videos with it and uh, see how I like it and also educate you. Big Rock Moto is about education, bringing you the information, and then you can decide what products, what motorcycles, etc., are best for you. So thanks so much for watching. Please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description below. Besides that, please ride safe, and we'll see you out there. It's just very difficult to fault uh, a modern GS for all around street riding, for twisty roads, for urban roads, for highway. It's just superb doing all this. Oh, there's a Jeep like mine. Um, so even if you didn't ever take this bike off-road, like I mentioned on, on the freeway portion,